This week helps us to reinvent something in secret. This is a week that starts out with a very, very loud mark. I think Monday might even be a little rude, if you will. There's something here that stirs us awake or jolts us to conscious awareness. And again, it's also a renewal. There's also a new beginning attached to it and an emerging kind of quality to the beginning of the week. And then as we move through the week, there is something that also gets reset. And it is about understanding the nature of our power and what we want to do with it. But again, it is in relationship to what it is we can do in the darkness of our inner world, of the ways in which we can connect with those invisible unseen forces of power that have been bestowed upon us or that are us for the simple fact that we are alive. And this week asks us to be really bold about what it is we want to do and how it is we want to direct that power towards a new beginning, towards an awakening, and towards something that is a little idealistic in nature, but rooted deeply in realism. Hey y'all, if you're looking for intel on 2024, check out your 2024 guidebook. This 100 plus page digital resource examines the year's astrological moments in detail and provides sign specific activities to support you through every twist and turn. You can order yours at channy.com. It is an invaluable resource for the year. Hello and welcome. This is the Astrology of the Week Ahead podcast. I'm your host, Chani Nicholas, and we are talking about the week of November 13th that starts out with a new moon on Monday morning the 13th. So the world over is having a new moon in Scorpio, but you might also want to think about working with it Sunday night into Monday, depending on your time zone. Look, new moons in Scorpio are always a moment of intense rebirth and intense seeding of new potential because Scorpio doesn't do anything lightly. It does it deeply. It does it in secret and it does it with, yes, intensity. So This new week, the new moon, the new beginning that we're going through is a portal. And it's not going to be full of ease, although there is some present this week. But it does feel like there's something here that's really in our face, but also something that could quite possibly feel more internal. You know, sometimes when those things come up within us and we're like, whoa, how did I not see this, know this before? Uh, So it's internal, but it's still quite loud within us. It might be external as well, but it does feel like however it will land in the world, I think it's going to have something to do with secrets and what is revealed and what has been hidden and what is now coming to light, what's breaking ground in a way. And we can think of a new moon as that anyways, because New moons are a time of, of metaphorically like planting a seed in the earth. So we don't see anything. There's darkness. The seed goes into darkness. There's no evidence of life yet. We have to just plant something with some faith and with action to tend to it and to water it. And the seed that we're planting now is connected to something that feels quite rebellious or revolutionary or awakening or doing something differently. So... That's why I started the podcast with a kind of awakening rebirth and something that is coming to conscious awareness. This is a seeding for us to be radically on our own side and to be working with things that are really honest, really, really clear and very deeply felt. And what it leads to... It's really interesting. So the sun and the moon come together in Scorpio 
on Monday and they're sitting right across from Uranus. And that's why it feels like there's a disturbing quality to this moment, to this this new potential that's happening. It wants to be innovative. It wants to be new. It wants to break from tradition. We want to do something differently. And then later on in the week, on Friday the 17th, the sun and Mars come together, which is like a new moon. So there's like two new beginnings, or we could think of this whole week as a week filled with new beginnings and potential for planting our intentions and saying, this is how I want to start. And the intentions are something that is connected to, again, radical awakenings or reinvention because of the opposition to Uranus, which Mars had just last Saturday on the 11th of November. So that's still permeating the air. But then what happens is everything goes, everything is opposing Uranus, the sun, the moon, and Mars. And then it goes on to try Neptune. And what that means without any of the astrology is there's something that's kind of rude, awakening, loud, a little bit in our face, or definitely wanting to get our attention because change is needed. And then we move on to something that is really helpful and quite idealistic. And it's like there's an awakening that happens. There's something that, you know, rudely gets in our face. And then there's a gift attached to it. Then we get to say, okay, well, if I'm dealing with this truth or with this innovative awakening, how to do things differently, how to do things in a new way, then I can get to working towards an ideal. Mars is a planet that rules this new moon. It rules Scorpio in the traditional astrology. And it's also doing this thing called a Kazemi, making the conjunction with the sun on Friday. Really special because it's happening in Scorpio. So Mars is super powered here. And with the light and heat and warmth of the sun infusing Mars in its own sign. This is about, again, seeding our potential, but in a really innovative, unique, different, radically honest kind of way towards taking action towards an ideal, towards being of service, towards being in connection with what could feel compassionate, what could look like a kind of like universal type of extension outwards, a universal type of love and consideration. So it's really wild astrology. Again, I think the beginning of the week might be a little rough and ready, but I think the weekend already has been. I'm filming this in in September, in October. I'm filming this in October. So I have no idea what's going on in this part of the year. I'm just projecting my ideas onto what the astrology is doing. And in between those two things, the new moon on Monday and the Mars Kazemi on Friday, there's a Mercury sextile Venus that happens on Wednesday. And that feels like the perfect message to receive amidst the post chaos of Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and right before the reconnection and remembrance of our power and the reseeding of our intention to be deeply rooted in that power and moving towards something that is ideal. Maybe we'll never get there. I don't think it's about attaining anything ideal ever, but I think being directed towards it can be really helpful. Again, because so much of what I'm talking about is happening in Scorpio, this could all be very much in secret. You don't have to share any of this with the world. This is something that goes a seed deep in the dark, dark, fertile, magical earth. And we might not see the results of it for a while, but once we plant that seed in the regenerative, rejuvenating, fertile earth of our conscious awareness of our life, then we water it, we make sure it gets light, we tend to it, we make sure it gets aerated, we make sure it has the nutrients it needs, and we, we wait patiently for it to emerge. 
And when life starts to spring from it, we say, ah, yes, I started this back in November. So I want you to, if you have the Chani Astro Planner of 2023, you can note the little ritual that we put in it. We've also got ones that are for 2024. So if you want to make sure that you're following along with the astrology in an actual physical book, because you like to write things in it, then we have those in our shop right now. But if you have the app, we also have a ritual for this new moon slash Kazemi. And whatever you do, I just want you to meditate on your power and your agency. What you do have access to and how you want to consciously direct it, how you want to heal your relationship with it, and how you want to work with this tool in the world, in your life, and how transformative that can be. And just one more kind of concept to give you. The new moon comes on Monday and it's a good time to just listen, to really be conscious and aware of what is starting to emerge within you. That's how I like to work with new moons. Yes, they're great for planting seeds of intention. Absolutely. And sometimes that intention is really well used if it's like, I'm going to listen to my life because the new moon is darkness. The new moon is nothingness. The new moon is a clean slate. So before I go and paint or project or start to put my images or my stuff onto it, I like to be quiet and to listen to what wants to move through me. And so the new moon, the beginning of the week is really good to listen to, again, the things that are awakening within us, the freedom that we want. Uh, this Uranus signature, again, all weekend into this week is like, like past weekend into this week is all about breaking free of something, freeing ourselves from the confines of traditions that do not work. And as we sit with that, what is emerging and then how do we want to work with what is happening on Friday? Or the whole week could be a really, really wonderful moment of that kind of deep contemplation and meditation. But by the time we get to Friday, the, the moon is starting to reveal itself in the sky and that's a good time to start taking action. And then as Mars and Sun come together, it's a great time to do a ritual because the waxing moon is starting to reveal itself. It's starting to show signs of potential. The crescent moon is so beautiful and it's building towards fullness so we can use that momentum. And as Friday comes around and Mars and the sun sun come together, we can be really thoughtful about how we acknowledge our power, embody it, direct it, and move with it because Mars is a tool. It's a, a, it symbolizes a weapon or a tool. They're the same thing, double edged sword, literally. And so Mars is like, how do you want to use this power that you've got? When we are unconscious of our power, we do damage. A million sages and teachers have said that before me. I think it's one of the truest statements we can live by. I live by it. When I am unconscious of my power, I do damage. When I'm conscious of it, I can be wildly creative because I know what I've got to work with and I know its weight and I know what it can do. And then I can play with it and I can really be part of molding and shaping my life. So that's our invitation this week. I hope we take it. I have given you this in like a very detailed breakdown in the Chani app in your reading for the week, talking about where this is happening for you, what part of your chart this is happening for you. You can also go and read your Mars in Scorpio horoscope, your Sun in Scorpio horoscope in the current sky section of the Chani app or on Chani.com. Please do a little thinking of this and um, consider what is starting to take shape what is starting to get seeded in these areas of your life. And I am sending you so much love and a lot of courage, a lot of bravery. Mars is about many things. One of them is bravery and courage. So may we all be more deeply rooted and may that be the seed we plant, more rooted in our courage and in our desire to know our power and to work with it consciously. 
Thank y'all so much for leaving us reviews in the app store. I wanted to leave you with this one by Kay Lassie. The Chani app is like having your wisest best friend who might also be fully connected up to cosmic intelligence on tap. It's consistently loving, clarifying, spot on, all the while being funny and entertaining. I'm grateful beyond measure to have something in the field so reliably supportive to soothe my soul, especially when the world feels so bonkers. Thank you so much for joining. I will see you back here next time. Bye for now.